Blessings to all. This is Brother Joseph Herbert Jr. May the Spirit of God Almighty give you ears to hear. May he give you clarity. May he sanctify you through the gospel that I preach to you. Through the word of God, the word of God, which is the Bible, which is by his spirit. May he sanctify you so that you can live righteous live righteousness before a God who sees and knows your thoughts, knows your goings, knows your comings. May he grant you salvation when you believe and obey. So I want to get on here and talk about what does denying yourself look like? What is denying yourself? What is the obedience to God in Christ Jesus look like? It's supposed to look like as if you are growing as if you put everything second, everyone second, and Christ is first. The Lord Jesus Christ commanded in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, to seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness so that all these things will be added. And what does that look like? You seek God first and Sometimes I, I can come off radical. Sometimes I can come off as um, forceful. I'm not trying to force anything on anybody, but the testimonies of God is sure. The testimony of what God is has redeemed in man is pure, is holy. Jesus Christ should be the first in your life. I quote again, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Seek first. It's a commandment by God. And Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Seek first the kingdom of God in all of his righteousness. What is his righteousness? Your obedience, your faithfulness to him. He is first and foremost. If he is not first, in your life, when you wake up and you don't give him the praise, though he is beyond worthy. And when I say beyond worthy, it's beyond your comprehension of worthy because what he did for you 2,000 years ago and that the fact that he lived and gave his life as a ransom for many. He gave his life as a, as a ransom for many. many. He sacrificed his whole, his, his life, his breath and his lungs. He sacrificed it so that you can spend forever with God when you believe. So to seek first the kingdom of God, your heart must be given to him. Lord, my heart is yours. My mind is yours. My strength is yours. My soul is yours. Acknowledge God in all of your ways. He will direct your path. And that's a promise found in Proverbs chapter 3. So I want to get into this. This because you have, when you become a Christian, when Jesus redeems you. And you're going to have friends that forsake you. You're going to have family members that are going to forsake you because you are holy. You are a brand new creature in Christ. The word of God says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have been passed away. Behold, all things become new. So you have the newness of life and it's like, is what, is, what Jesus described being born again. You are a, if you are freshly renewed in the spirit and born again, you are like a baby. You are like learning again. Things are new. You have to learn how to walk, but now walk in the spirit to obey, to obey God and his righteousness. So, yes, you're going to have friends that are going to forsake you that you used to hang with because they don't want the righteousness of God. They don't want the light that is on you. You're going to have family members, even some family members that have been raised in the church and think they are right with God, but yet behind closed doors, behind the secrets that man cannot see, but God sees only, they're going to forsake you. They're going to, because they see your obedience to God. So Jesus puts it plainly like this, and not all can receive this word because he said it plainly in Luke chapter 14, verse 26. If 
any man come to come to me if any man meaning if anyone come to me and hate not his father he used the word hate now i will explain and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren meaning brother and sisters yes and his own life also he cannot be my disciple. Now, what does he mean by that? He said he used the word hate, meaning your obedience to God, you're, you're putting him first bef before everyone else and everything else. It looks like it should look like as hatred for the world and hatred for those who are not focused on him. It should look like as you hate them and you are jealous for God. You are you are you wanting God in obedience. It may not many people will not understand will not understand that because there's a heart saying. Jesus said many heart sayings in the word of God. So your obedience, you must forsake everything, and God will bless you afterwards. Your obedience matter. Obedience is better than sacrifice. So I gotta read that again. If any man come to me and hate not his father. And mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And he goes on and says, and whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Meaning, whoever cannot remain consistent in obeying, whoever cannot remain consistent and enduring to the end, who cannot stand in the face of adversity because you're going to have troubling situations troubling circumstances and you have to make the sound decision by the wisdom that God gives man when you ask him favorably he he will give it to you you are going to come across if you don't make those sound decisions you're going to fall you're going to fall your foundation is supposed to be solidified in the rock of Jesus Christ the rock of salvation and what is salvation brother Joseph salvation means deliverance from wicked works deliverance from old mindsets mindsets of the world carnality deliverance from your fleshly ways deliverance from your old desires your desires for the cares of this life your desires for the world your your desires to be like the next celebrity the next singer the next rapper the next nba player the next NFL player, the next UFC fighter, the next boxer, the world. Why do you think? Why do you think it's called when they win the, when a when a when a football team or a basketball team win the champ? Why do you think it's called the world the world heavyweight champion? Why do you think it's called the world cup or the world champion? Because the world loves its own. Jesus said that in John chapter 15. The world will love its own. If you read that. So whosoever does not hear his, cannot bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. You, your desire is to desire Jesus Christ so that you can be saved. For which of you intending to build a tower sits not down first and counts the cost? Whether he has sufficient to finish it. So you're, the, when you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, not just in water, because Jesus Christ was the example of what is being baptized in water and in the Holy Ghost. Because it says the Spirit fell on him like a dove and the Spirit of God was on him. So Jesus Christ is the example. So when you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, God gives you a measure of endurance, a measure to desire him more, to desire to pray to him, the desire to read his word and meditate on it day and night, and the desire to worship him in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit. That's what it says in John chapter 4 when he met the woman on the well. So Jesus Christ says, for which of you intending to build a tower sits not down first and counts the cost, whether he has sufficient to finish it. Lest happily after he has laid the foundation it is and is not able to finish it, all that behold, it begin to mock him. So you cannot, you have to remain consistent. You have to remain 
enduring. He who endures to the end will be saved. That's a promise by the Lord Jesus Christ and those words are written in red. So you are going to face adversity and it's going to be troubling. Even the devil, which is which his role in this life is to kill, steal, and destroy, he's going to take part. He can take advantage if you make a foolish decision and compromise and make decisions that will be detrimental for your life. And he can take part and then all of a sudden, not knowing when you're going to die, not knowing when you're going to die, you can die in rebellion. You have false uh, teachings of the once saved, always saved doctrine, which is pretty much heresy because, and that doctrine is consistent. It, co it consists of believing when you're baptized, you're saved, now do whatever you want. It is so false. No, you have to obey Jesus. Again, I quote John 14 and 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Jesus says, if you love me, your meaning your action, your fruits, the way you think, the way you conversate, the way you walk in this life and obey. Your obedience is action towards God and it expresses that you love Jesus, that you love God. You can't say you love him with your mouth and not obey. You can't be you can't say that you are you are in love with the uh, God of all creation and not obey Him because obedience is is better than sacrifice. So, saying that, let me see what Jesus said in John uh, Luke chapter uh, fourteen verse thirty. Saying this man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king sits not down first? And consults whether he be able to, with 10,000 to meet him that comes against him with 20,000. Or else while the other is yet a great way off, he sends an ambassage and desires conditions of peace. So Jesus is making a pretty much speaking in a parable. Um, do you have what it takes to endure? Do you have what it takes to count the cost? Because... What, I love what Paul said in Philippians. He says, I believe it's in chapter 1, He who began a good work in you will complete it until the day of Christ. So when you are born again and you set your heart and mind on him every day, meditating on his word, the work in you will be completed. That's a promise by God. And that doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that that goes along with the once saved, always saved doctrine. No, that's a different doctrine than the truth. Because the once saved, always saved doctrine is not truth. And so many people believe in that doctrine. But Jesus, according to your faithfulness, according to your obedience to Jesus Christ, he who has begun a good work in you will complete it, will finish it until the day of Jesus, until judgment day. So Jesus goes on in Luke chapter 14 and says, So likewise, as he made the comparison, uh, matter of fact, 32, or else while the other is yet a great way off, he sends an ambassage and desires conditions of peace. So he's making mention that why would you start a war with a with with a thousand compared to the work of 10,000? You don't have enough people to finish the, or complete the battle and accomplish it. No, the the battle will slew what you have. So you don't have enough. You can't do this with your own effort. You can't finish this life by your own strength. No one gets into heaven without the Spirit of God. No one gets into heaven without Jesus Christ and committing your life and your mind and your heart to him. And he says, so likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsakes not all that he has, he cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if the salt have lost his savior, wherewith shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land, nor yet for the dunghill, but men cast it out. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. So you, God has anointed the sons of God. And you have Isaiah 61 that says, it is the spirit of the Lord. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach Glad tidings 
or good news to the meek. And you are anointed when you are born again, meaning God's hand is on your life and his hand is your protection on your life when you obey and follow Jesus Christ. So you have the capacity to endure when you obey and when you are faithful because you want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Jesus Christ is the center of man's life. I'm going to turn to Isaiah 53 for a minute because not everyone understand, understands the gospel of what happened 2,000 years ago when God the Father was made like a human being born from a virgin. And Isaiah, the book of Isaiah was written 700 years before Jesus Christ was born. So many people do not read the Old Testament, but it's prophetic. And why I say that? Because again, I repeat, Isaiah and of course many other books in the Old, all the books in the Old Testament reveals Christ Jesus, prophesies about Christ Jesus. But Isaiah 53 specifically says this, and this is good news where he says, who has believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? To whom the arm of the Lord is revealed, meaning who has given the authority, who has given man power to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it goes on and says, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and a, as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. So it's, the, it's prophesying about Jesus Christ. Nobody knew who he was until he began to preach. Nobody knew who, nobody could identify him until John the Baptist has prepared the way. There is the son, there he is, the, the one who I prophesied about, the one who I was telling you about, who takes away the sins of the world. The, there he is, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And it is he who is sandal straps who I'm not worthy to stoop down and unloose. So Jesus Christ was prophesied and John the Baptist prepared the way for him, prepared the way because you need to be ready for him. You are, you need to be prepared for him. You know not when he comes, he's going to crack this sky and he's going to come at an hour. No one expects. And it says he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows. Men rejected God. In Christ Jesus, men rejected Jesus, his only begotten son, God's only begotten son, Jesus Christ, because he exposed the lies. He exposed the hypocrisy. He exposed our hearts. He knows what's in the darkness because God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. He is despised and rejected of men. Likewise for the sons of God, because we obey Jesus, the truly born again obey Jesus. And again, it's going to look like hatred because we have many accusations. We have accusations that we are being kidnapped. We have been brainwashed. And to some degree, that is right. For Joseph, brother Joseph has been brainwashed. Washed by the purity of the blood of the lamb. Washed by the purity of the holiness of God. Washed by the purity of the righteousness of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. Out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Man will not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So I desire Christ. I desire God. I desire to obey the Lord. And it's likewise for the sons of God, for all that believe. Again, the power of God unto salvation is the gospel. The testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. Revelation 19 declares and says, So he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows. Meaning he was grieved by the heresy. He was grieved by the false doctrine, the, the teachers and the traditions of, of the elders and the teachers and tra traditions of men that made the word of God of no effect. Yes, he was grieved. He was acquainted with grief and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. 
because man loves to sin. Men loves darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did not esteem he was he was esteem him and stricken. He was smitten of God and afflicted. Now what did that what does that describe? I'm gonna point. I'm gonna put two and two together. If you do not understand. Jesus Christ hung on the cross for you and I. The full wrath of God was poured out on Christ. He hung for hours on the cross. He hung for hours for you and I. He was bruised, and it says that in here. Matter of fact, let me go not quote that. I'm going to read that to you. He hung for hours. The wrath of God. The, he, in all his perfection, he obeyed the Father perfectly. His meat was to do the will of the Father. His meat was not, he labored not for the meat that perishes. He labored for the meat. He is that meat that endures to eternal life, Jesus says in John chapter 6. So your work before God is to do his will and obey what he says. He is the bread of life. He is the living bread that came from heaven, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. And it says right here, one of the most quoted verses, Isaiah 53 and 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was on him, and with his stripes we are healed. So when he hung on the cross for you and I, he died for the godly and the ungodly. So when you believe on the sacrificial lamb, he is the lamb of God, you will be transformed. I'm, and he did it for me. He did it for anyone and all that truly are born again that believe on the son of God. All we like sheep have gone astray, meaning we have turned to other doctrines. We have turned to the cares of his life. We love ungodly family family members. We love um, the the what the deceptions of the world is by the sway of the wicked one. We love things that God despises, but God is merciful. He is rich in mercy. He made a way for you to spend forever with Him, and that is believing on His Son. In verse seven. Now, finish verse 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Meaning, again, when Jesus Christ hung on that cross, all of sin of mankind was laid on him. He became a curse on the tree. And he would, and he did not deserve it because he was perfect in thought, word, and deed. He knew no sin, the word of God says. And he was not deserving of that torment and punishment on the cross. Yet the two thieves on the cross, they was deserving. One railed accusation. If you be the son of God, save us and yourself. The other one rebuked him and saying, do you not fear God? What we are deserving on this cross, we are deserving of it. And it's just what we are deserving of it. But this man, this, this man right here, he did nothing wrong. He did nothing amiss. Lord, remember me when you enter into your kingdom. Jesus turns to him and says, today you will be with me in paradise. That one thief on the cross who is nameless, he believed and called him the Lord. Didn't even know him, but he can sense the, the power of God and what he did, his perfection, what was happening. He sensed that God made it available for him to sense that. And he called him the Lord. Lord, remember me. Yes, I am deserving of this just punishment because I am a thief. The other one was prideful. <laughs> Save us if you be the son of God. He was talking like Satan. Uh, if you be the son of God, if you be the Christ, save us in yourself. The same language why I say that, he sounded like Satan because that's what Satan did in the wilderness when Jesus was tempted by him. He says, if you be the son of man, command these stones to become bread. If you be the son of God, jump off this mountain for it is written, the angels will catch you and bear you up unless you dash your foot against a stone. 
If you be the son of God, bow down and worship me. Jesus rebuked them those three times in temptations as recorded. He rebuked them with the word of God because he is the word of God. It, he says, man will not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. He says, it is written again, written again you shall not tempt the Lord your God. And then he says, because he is the authority of he is the Holy One of Israel. He says, get behind me, Satan. You shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. So Jesus Christ gives man power and the authority to tread and trample over, scor over scorpions and serpents and over all the powers of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means should hurt you if you are faithful, if you are obedient. Because why do you think, why do you think that in the world people like horror movies or people don't like horror movies but still desire and they fear evil. They fear the devil. That's what the devil wants you to do. He wants you to fear him because he is like a, he is a God, G, lowercase G-O-D. Because he wanted to be like God. Because he wanted to be like the Most High. He said, I will be like the Most High when he was Lucifer in heaven. And that's what cast him out. You have the five I wills. You have the six things that the Lord hates, yet seven are an abomination to him, which is described in Proverbs chapter 6. These are the things that was found in Lucifer's heart. So when man behaves himself like the devil, man is walking in darkness. When woman child is behaving themselves they must be corrected their heart must be convicted and pricked so they can make a decision to choose life or to choose death to choose christ or choose the ways of the devil the wicked one the old serpent because god made a way for you to escape jesus christ is lord jesus christ is lord so let me continue isaiah 53 Verse 7, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before his shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. Jesus Christ, when he was on the cross, when he was on that cross and they all mocked him, they wagged their heads, they, they said he... He said that he is the son of God. There was falsely accusing him even when he was on the cross. He said that he is the son of God and he cannot come down from that cross. Or let him, let him see if Elijah will save him, save him when he cried out, Eli, Eli, lama shtabashtani, meaning my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So he opened not his mouth. He did not revile back to those who... Oh, um, mocked him. He did not revile back. The Roman guards, they afflicted him severely. They scourged him. They beaten him with, with whips and they afflicted him and they mocked him when they planted a crown of thorns and placed it on his head and gave him a purple robe to wear and a reed. They bowed down to him and saying, Hail King of the Jews. Mocked him. God is not mocked. And then they took the root and struck it on his head. They hated Jesus Christ. That's what pride will take your heart. That's what your mindset will be if you are desiring the world. That's if you if your heart is full of perversion and you love to use profanity. You you, you love the, the things of the world. You're gonna become like the world. You're gonna be, become like the children of darkness if you have not committed your life to Jesus Christ. And so he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a dumb to the slaughter and as a sheep before his sh her shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and, was, and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people was he stricken. So he was like a he was condemned as a criminal. Jesus Christ was condemned on the cross like as if he cr committed the greatest crime, as if he committed a crime so so vile 
That's how you know how much the Pharisees, the chief priests and elders and scribes and Sadducees hated Jesus Christ. They wanted him crucified because he exposed them. His truth exposed their hearts because their heart was not made right with God. They lied in his face saying that we be Abraham's seed. And Jesus replies, if you were Abraham, see, you would do the works of Abraham. Then they, then they said, we be uh, the seed of God. We are God's sons. We are, he is our father. Jesus replies and says, if God was your father, you would love me. Meaning if you would, if you love Jesus Christ, keep his commandments. So Jesus Christ made it plain as day with the truth. He is the sword, and, it, and the sword brings forth division. Brings forth division. If you are obedient to God, you are like the sword. The sword of the Spirit is the Word of God, as Ephesians 6 describes the whole armor of God. That is the sword of the Spirit. This is the sword of the Spirit, and the Word of God is Jesus Christ. It says in Hebrews chapter 4, one of my most favorite verses, the Word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of joint and of marrow, of soul and of the spirit, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intentions of the heart, or the intents of the heart. So the Lord knows all things. All things are naked before a holy God. So he was taken from prison. <laughs> it's prophesied about Jesus. It, it, you... If you don't have ears to hear, you will not understand the word of God, especially the Old Testament. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people. He was stricken and he made his grave with the wicked. <laughs> and with the rich is his death because he had done no violence. It's telling you right there. He did no, he sinned not. He did no violence. Neither there was any deceit in his mouth. He never lied. He was perfect in thought, word, and deed. He was perfect unto the Father. And he made his grave with the wicked. So in verse 10, yet it pleased, now listen to this. It says, it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He was put, he has put him to grief. The Lord put him to grief when you shall make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. So it pleased the father to bruise, to crush his son. He was crushed on the cross for you and I, the ultimate sacrifice. Now, let me ask you a question. If God the Father, who is holy, who is just, who bruised his only begotten son on the cross, who put him to grief, who his wrath was on his son, if he did that to his only begotten son, sinner, what do you think he would do with you when you stand before him? When you stand before a God who is holy, who is righteous and just, and you die in rebellion, you die as a sinner, you die in unbelief, you die as a homosexual, you die as a drunkard or a sorcerer or a lustful or a fornicator or an adulterer, you're going to be held accountable for your works. The Lord has been prophesied and the resurrected Jesus has said this in Revelation chapter 2. I am he who searches the rings and the hearts and to give everyone according to their works and the fruit of their doings. So he would judge your mind. He would judge your heart. He would judge your life according to his standard, according to his holiness, according to his justification of what he did for you and I on the cross. Your own words will condemn you if you are not right with God. 
If you use profanity, if you blaspheme his name, you will be held accountable. But guess what? When you commit to Jesus Christ, when you, when you submit to his will and give your heart to him so you, you, and you allow him to change your heart and change your mind, you are a new creature. You, are a, you have new desires. You begin to hate the things that God hates and love the things that God loves. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is the Holy One of Israel. And so the fear of the Lord, a lot of people lack in his life. Many people do not fear the Lord out of reverence. And what I mean by that is they have no high regard for the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise, despise wisdom and instruction. And so that is talked about a lot in Proverbs. It says another verse, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, the evil way, the forward mouth do I hate. So if you don't fear the Lord, you don't hate the evil way. If you don't fear the Lord, you're going to have a forward mouth, a perverse mouth. If you don't fear the Lord, you're going to love to do foolish things. You're going And you think that will be wise. Depending on what it is, the Lord can seal you in a condition, a mindset that is unable to come to God. That is called reprobate. And a lot of people, a lot of professed believers are living unequally yoked lifestyles, un, um, compromised lifestyles, um, lukewarm lifestyles, and not even knowing that they will be held accountable. Do you not know that the Lord will spew you out of his mouth? Because Jesus Christ is the standard. He is the Holy One. He died for you and I. And so when you believe on Jesus Christ and his sacrifice and what he done for you on that cross, you will be forgiven. You will be forgiven. So it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief when you shall make his soul an offering for his sin. When, that means when you believe on Jesus that he, he is holy, he is just, he's the only begotten of the Father, that you are wicked before God, you can be made clean. You can be made whole and be consistent in obeying him. God will strengthen you in every form because he, he should be your strength. He is everlasting strength. Isaiah 26 and 3 and 4. Um, the Lord... Is what it says. Let me turn it real fast. And if you hear a baby in the background, that is my son who is five months years old. So it says, it says this. It says this. You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on, on you, the Lord. Trust in the Lord forever. For in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. So when your mind is consistently on the things of God, you can confront bad thoughts. You can confront motives and intentions that are not pure. You have the power to pull down thoughts and make your mind right with them when you believe. Because what Paul said in, uh, I believe it's 1 Corinthians chapter, no, it's 2 Corinthians chapter 10. He says, for our weapons of warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down the strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And to bring every thought into captivity, into captivity to the obedience of Christ, having any readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is being fulfilled. So you have the power to pull down distracting thoughts. You have the power by the Spirit of God to pull down every thought that bombards your mind. When you focus on Jesus, when you meditate on the things that are just and noble and true and praiseworthy and a good report and lovely, any kind of virtue, any kind of praise, when you meditate on those things, you are confronting, you are overcoming. He that overcomes, Jesus Christ will give to eat 
from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Because the fruit of the righteous is also a tree of life and a wholesome tongue is also a tree of life. So the Lord wants you perfect. He wants you purified every day. You, you, you can't go a day without prayer and supplication. You can't go a day without reading his word. You can't go out go a day without worshiping him. You need God in this life to endure. You need Jesus Christ to endure to the end. You need his spirit because his spirit is life. His spirit quickens the flesh profits nothing. The words that Jesus Christ the Lord speaks is spirit and it is life. God was made like a man and became a human being. He became a human being. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. So Jesus Christ walked the earth in all perfection, all holiness. Yet he was persecuted for, for being a blasphemer. Pervert. He was persecuted for being uh, perverting the law of Moses. And they sent all kinds of false accusations against him. And likewise for the Christians, likewise for Paul and Peter and the disciples after Jesus resurrected and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. Likewise for the Christian, you will be persecuted for unrighteousness. But guess what? You rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. That's what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5. He says, let me go there real fast. Blessed are those who persecute you and say all kinds of manner of evil against you for my name's sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. That's what it says, right? That's what it says. Blessed are they, yes, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness. Righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you. You're going to have, you're going to be oppressed. You're going to be persecuted. Blessed are you in your obedience and your faithfulness to God in Christ Jesus. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and will say all manner of evil against you falsely, falsely for my name's sake. I got accused of, me and another brother in the Lord got accused of false doctrine. Because we was giving this person the truth of God's word because this person was in error. This person was believing other doctrine and he says he was he was raised Pentecostal, but now he reads the Quran. And the word of God says that's er described erroneous. That's doctrines of devils. You can't you can't serve two masters. You're gonna either love the one and hate the other. And, or despise the other. You can't serve two masters. You can't serve God and mammon. Jesus Christ is the standard and it is the way to heaven. And this, this individual, he, quoted, he can quote scripture, but his mindset, the way he thinks, was described, is described in Titus, which I did a video last night in this, and mentioned the same thing because there are many heretics in this world that are going to try to pervert you and subvert you from the truth. It says in Titus chapter 3, avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and striving about the law for they are unprofitable and vain. A man that is a heretic, what is a heretic? A heretic is an individual who forms opinions and goes along like it's the truth. A man that is a heretic after the first and second admonition reject. So me and another brother in the Lord, we was giving him the truth and he was just being confused in his conversation. He he was identifying himself as not knowing what he believes. He believed in some false things. And it says, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sins, being condemned of himself. So by your uh, unrighteous man, your own words, you will be condemned. Jesus says, he who believes not is condemned already because he has not believed on the name of the only begotten son. So when we, me and another brother, when we try to you know, give him the truth of God's word and, and the gospel, and we notice that this man is subverted and a heretic, we had no more conversations. We don't cast our pearls before swine. We don't give holy things to the dogs. We leave him alone. If he comes with questions about spiritual matters, 
We don't have any more conversations with that individual because he's subverted. He has to see our lifestyle. He has to see that we are of Christ. We are the sons of the most high God. We are the sons of the living God. We are kings and priests and we obey Jesus. We don't believe in the things that you believe because the individual sits with vain people and talks about the NBA and LeBron James and the other things instead of have, as his professed as believer, instead of being the standard of Christ and not teaching or preaching or ministering about Christ Jesus and how he is the only way to heaven, he does not want anything to do with that, but goes by his own knowledge that is puffed up. So we don't give holy things to dogs. We don't cast our pearls before swine, lest they turn and tear you in pieces, what the word of God says. So we are God's peculiar people. We are his hidden treasures. We are his chosen vessels. And when I say we, I'm talking about the truly born again Christians who obey Jesus Christ. Yes. So you must be born again if you want to spend forever with God. Baptize in the water and the spirit. Let the Holy Ghost ignite fire in you so that you can obey. I am Brother Joseph Herbert Jr., this is for his glory.